Back in the game and well at the top A king of the ring and calling my spies I'm raising the bar to crank it the notch I'm full of mistakes cause life is a box Life can get brighter and brighter I walk through that curtain, my levels get higher and higher Studied the best and this generation I'm next Super kick party, no doubt we just hit a suplex Hooker by crook, survive if I let you They stand to their feet well, What's going on ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls Fresh out the box, stop looking watch Ready yet? Did you check your watch? Because we all know that life's a botch. Hey, what's happening? It's your boy, Highlight Real. Uh, none other than my brother from another, you know, uh, we are one short. I know you guys are probably like, hey, where's the oh so beautiful Ashley? But she couldn't make it. She's uh, on an early holiday break as we speak already. Uh, so definitely, sis, shout out to you. Uh, happy New Year indeed, for sure. And so uh, for the most part, We'll be seeing her at the top of next year, ready to roll and rock and roll with the Lights Watch podcast. But of course, as you know, my tag team partner, my brother from another, my oose with all the juice, Mr. Yeet, you know what I'm saying? Right here. <laughs> Mr. Yeet him up, shout it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, hey, man, we're going with it. It's cool, but it's all good. Um, my bro, y'all already know, man, it's, it's that time of year where we get together and we collab. We typically collab quite often, but this is the more, the big, big collab, the super finale collab. Uh, and as you got to see, if you guys already have already listened and checked out, if you haven't already, stop what you're doing real quick. Go check out part one before you even get into this one because this is part two. So I need you to stop, put a pause, go ahead, go over to the Gresham Unleashed podcast, listen to the part one of our official third annual, that's right, three times, y'all, we've done this three years straight, our end of the year award ceremony where we just give flowers out to all wrestlers, both on the independent and the mainstream scene you know what i'm saying so it's been a crazy 2k23 as y'all can see right there if you're watching it you see the graphics shout out to my boy gresh digital media for always you know providing such great graphics on this evening but uh with that being said we got a lot of dope categories that we're gonna finish up the part two side of uh categories such as uh, theme song of the year. We got feud of the year. We got some viewers choice categories as well, like viewers TV match of the year, uh, viewers pay-per-view of the year, you name it. We got a lot of dope categories. Um, not quite as lengthy as part one was, you know what I'm saying? We covered the majority of them on part one. So again, if you missed out, go make sure you check that out so that you're caught up when you get to part two. And if you're already, then hey, welcome to part two. This is what we do here, baby. Uh, but before we go into it, Brother Gress, talk to people, yes. man. You, 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 oh, you ready? You, to you, 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 oh, you want me? To, you want me to talk to these people? Uh, yeah, what's yeah, greeting? <laughs> greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nobody near pals, baby mamas, baby dads, and everybody in between. You know my intro. Yeah, I got to do what I gotta do wherever I go. But yo, if you don't know, now you know. It's your boy. Is it, yours truly, Joshua Gresham, aka Gress. I am the self-proclaimed voice that does the most, but the purveyor of mischief. And John, I had to step over to my brother's world of the Lights of Bosch podcast. So for those of you who are used to me being completely unleashed and unfiltered, no, just know I am PG Grush for the, for the time being because we try to, <laughs> we're trying to expand and try to evolve. So yeah, if you yeah. expected me to drop a couple of F-bombs and all that stuff, you, you it, I don't even do it on my show. I just noticed that. I don't even do it. You, you, you have been pretty, pretty chill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I noticed that. Sexual experience. Yes, you have I'm, been. I'm, 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 I noticed that, and it's more so as we're, we're we're getting older. Like everything doesn't have to be loud and and vulgar and profane inducing. It's like if you sure. read a book and read a dictionary, you can actually evolve your vocabulary. Like that's mm -hmm. all I do. Every every time I wake up, I uh, start I, I I read motivational, and I post my motivational quotes, and I also make sure I learn new words that I haven't haven't learned before. So it's like even if I put out. You can even look at my tweet since I've been cleaning up my Twitter for the past month and a half. I've literally been changing my vocabulary by by design. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm 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 PG Gresh. Come on, now. as I get older, it's more so not even. It's not even because I'm changing who I am. Is I'm evolving. So. Yeah, Come on. but other than that, yo, we we got to we got to do this. We got better audio this time because for those, if, for those of you who do check out part one, be warned uh, that my audio, yours truly, was distorted because my board decided to update in the middle of the stream, so <laughs> it was sounding. It wasn't even distorted; it was distance. It's, it's, it was basically going off of my webcam audio instead of my clear microphone. So, 
Hey, you live and you learn. Especially that's the risk you take when you do when you do the live version. But fortunately for this one, we are pre-recorded. So yes, yes, uh, yes. Shout pre-recorded. out to the pre-record, you know, and especially <laughs> when they don't know it's taped. Because we're not, unlike most mainstream wrestling shows, you know, we're not obvious with piped in noise that we're taped. You know what I'm saying? It's good. You know. We natural. We natural even in our pre-tape, baby. It feels like we live, but we pre-tape. So, you know, we just don't have live chats. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's yeah, all but, yo, we, we, yeah, we, we always pre- obviously appreciate y'all for kicking it with us in the live chat. So, sure. you know, for might sure. as well go ahead. and we, I know you guys are ready for us to wrap up, close out the year, 2023, yes. with yes. our final show of the year because letting y'all know right now this is part two more likely you're going to see this wherever wherever you listen to we're not doing any more shows out of this this is our mm-hmm. last recording we're done yes. <laughs> and for the remainder of the of the year and you know even maybe a little bit of 2024 but we'll be right back and don't in no time so j- just trust me trust us we go yeah. we're gonna got a lot in store for y'all in 2024 the content is going to continue to flow it's just we're gonna so. take a break so you you already know how you we know do. I just came back from break, but you know I said <laughs> you, you can never hey. have enough breaks. Hey, thank you. I was just about to tell you that, brother. You can never have enough breaks, and I'm grateful for my brother. You know what I'm saying? It's been a phenomenal year rocking with you both on the Gresham Unleashed Pod, Pod, and of course being right here on the Lights of Botch Pod with my brother from another. So without further ado, man, uh, let's give the people what they've been wanting in this part two season. So uh, we gonna you keep that to- up. I say you want me to uh for those of you who, who haven't seen part one, you want me to do the, the the rules again? Yes, let's go down the rules real quick and let them know right. what's going on so they know what's so up. for those of you who don't know, in tradition, we, we try to evolve with the end of the year awards. So we want to make sure that there is a vote in place for that is for any categories that is non-viewers choice. Viewers choice will be read by me when we get to that category. But for those of you who don't understand, uh in order for their the nominees to win their respective categories there must be a one a, a unanimous two and zero uh vote and if there is a case of a i guess you could say a draw then we have to take it to the end of the year awards wheel and go from there so uh it's pretty straightforward and but there's no th- don't throw away voting allowed like we can't just say oh I'm gonna vote we have to elaborate we have and if there is a case that there is a draw uh, again, which it shouldn't be because the will is, is 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 indefinite. But if there isn't a draw, we have up to like ninety seconds to explain why this person should win. Every time we make our vote, we have up to ninety seconds. Like, hey, this is why I feel like this person should win. This this win, and we vote, and that's our vote. Mm-hmm. And then if there's the case that we both go, like if we, if we don't agree with what we're saying, then we we vote our own way. It's pretty straightforward. So it's like it's, it has to be two and zero vote. Or if there's a case of a draw, we take it to the wheel, and then we obviously going to put the wheel in the actual video format. If you are watching on the on the video side, because mm-hmm. we don't want people to be like it's rigged, it's rigged. So we just want to yeah. want a fair shake. So it's all honest, baby. It's all honest. I oh yeah. So <laughs> straight to the point. Let's do it. Okay. So uh, you know everybody loves a good good microphone moment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, everybody loves when someone just says something so outrageous. You're like, oh, my God, did he just say what I think he said? Or did she just say? She didn't say that. Tell me they did not just say that in the words of the illustrious Booker T. So with our first category for the day to kick things off, we got best mic drop moment. Uh, and as you know, these are just moments where you just set a bar so crazy that it has social media blowing up. And I do mean blowing up, like literally memes, you name it, anything and everything. Something said so crazy that it got you going through the week like, wow, that was a moment. So best m- mic drop of the moment. Uh, we got our nominees right here. So first up, we have CM Punk is back and I am the monkey wrench and their future plans. CM Punk mentioned this on his first SmackDown return since returning to the WWE Mm -hmm. on December 8th of 2023. Next up, we've got the you've gotten comfortable moment that was spit by my man Swerve Scott, you know what I'm saying, Uh, in his battle and his first promo battle with Adam Hangman Page on Dynamite, September 6th of 2023. Then we got next up, get it together, Billy. Athena says it in a moment to Billy Starks on Ring of Honor TV, October 26th of 2023. Next up, 
I am the standard of Ring of Honor. Athena set this very, very bar to the man that many would say is the best on the mic, Mr. Eddie Kingston on Ring of Honor TV, November 30th, 2023. Next up, we got what's with all these wrestlers and their daddy issues coming from the daddy himself, as many would call him, the father of the fatherless, if you will. I don't even know if that's his nickname these days, but he might as well make Patriarch. it that. Ah, the patriarch. Yes, that is a good one, you know, but he should add that. You know what I'm saying? It's a nice pun to see him punk if you think about it. But, you know, hey, you know, that's neither here nor there. Christian Cage's promo on Wardlow and Arn Anderson in Dynamite of October 10th, 2023. Next up, we got Dog. Do you know how many years I've turned doubters into believers? Ah, yes, the illustrious promo battle uh, between Wesley to Carmelo Hayes on NXT August 15th of 2023. And next up, we've got, you're just a redneck version of my cousin. Oh, so lovingly, Roman, Roman Reigns, always with the cheap one-liners that just get you saying, wow, that's some real jerk tribal chief-ish. Uh, Roman Reigns to LA Night on SmackDown, November 3rd of 2023. Then next up, we've got, you better find your way. Eddie Kingston to Jay Lethal on Dynamite, October 21st of 2023. Next up, we got, I will do everything in my power to protect this place from people like you. We are talking about Seth Rollins to CM Punk in their first promo exchange since Punk returned to WWE on Monday Night Raw, December 11th of 2023. Next up, we got, go F yourself, Christian Cage. Two, Adam Copeland on Dynamite, October 4th of 2023. Uh, and then, of course, last but not least in this category, we've got You Ain't Ready for the Misery, Eddie Kingston to Claudio, September 16th of 2023. Those are your category nominees for the category of Best Mic Drop Moment. Without further ado, I'm going to open up the floor now. And, uh, Gresh, I'm going to let you kick things off as far as who you felt had the best mic drop moment of 2023. I'm going to give it a stack. I, I enjoyed every last one of these promos mm. so, so much for their own different ways and different reasons, especially the Swerve and Hangman. And don't get me started on the uh, go F yourself with, C with Christian Cage and Adam Copeland because Adam yeah. Copeland got his lick back and he said it to Christian on the build up to their one of their matches that they are about to have. So, but if I have to be honest with you, and especially because I've been on this, uh, giving this woman her flowers because a lot of people don't really do or they don't go out of their way to watch it. But I have to go with the promo that Athena cut on Eddie Kingston. I am mm. the standard of the ring of Ring of Honor. And the reason why I say that is because she, you can, you when you look at it, and especially if you f like watch the build up to her inevitable match with Billy Starks, mm -hmm. you understood where she was coming from. Like, I'm a workhorse. I've been literally building, put this company on my back while all these other champions are going to this place, this place, this place, but I'm still here grinding, putting putting in the work, putting in the time. And I'm showing everyone that if you want to make it in Ring of Honor, in this wrestling business, you have to go through me. Mm -hmm. So when she said, I am the standard of Ring of Honor, you felt every drop. So my vote is Athena. Okay. All right. I respect it. Shout out to Athena. First and foremost, she's been nominated in a lot of categories and I do believe she took home some titles uh, yep. on part one. So make sure again, you check it out. If you didn't know which one she already won awards to with that being said, um, man, it looks like we're going to get our first split decision of this uh, episode to be completely honest, because I actually have to go another way with this one. So I'd say go ahead and get that wheel ready for us. Good Gresh, because uh, at the end of the day, man, as much as I do respect your decision on what you said, and I love Athena and what she is doing. I, however, I'm going to keep that same line of felt and I am going to go with the promo on NXT between none other than Wesley and Carmelo Hayes. Simply put, because as we know, you did indeed feel exactly where Wesley was coming from, given everything that man had been through from his journey in NXT, starting off as a tag team talent, having his partner officially, you know, uh, unfairly let go for his for reasons that we all know and won't cover in this moment. But nope. still, 
to then have to earn his way to show and prove that he is truly a single star and that he has evolved into not only a true single star putting on quality matches, but the fans truly being behind him each and every single week as he would do his thing and just become that ultimate underdog that now you take as a full grown player. Uh, and so with a guy like Carmelo, given where he was at in that moment, being on top, uh, given their history of battles with the North American title, you knew like, okay, there was so many one liners, not to mention him just throwing people off, hopping and jumping on top of a table to break it in half in the process to stare this man in the face and let you know, I'm really serious right now. You, you will hear me. Uh, I got to <laughs> get after that. Yeah, it's like you, you got to give it. I have to give it to a guy like Wesley, especially given how his uh, 2K23 unfortunately ended. It just made that promo feel that much stronger because now it's yet another obstacle to overcome so that we can hope to see him at some point in 2K24. Uh, so with that, let's see what the will says. And let's see who takes home the category for best mic drop moment. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have our winner, Athena, with I Am the Standard of Ring of Honor. And uh, well deserved. That is yet another title that Athena takes home. So, wow. congratulations to Miss Athena. Let's clap it up for y'all. Will clap. is in her favor. Will is in her favor. Uh, <laughs> shout out to you still, Mr. Wesley. I do, do appreciate everything, and we look forward to you coming back to us soon. Uh, so, Keeping it a buck, uh, we're going to stay right there on the mic, you know, because sometimes it's not just about a one-liner bar, you know. It's one thing to say something on the mic that makes keeps people talking all week. But when you consistently are so good that every week is a moment for people to talk about, that leads us to the next category. Now we're going to talk about who's got the best mic game mm. of 2020. Three. Who in 2K23 had the best mic game? So let's go down the list of categories, y'all, and let's see what we got. All right. So first up, we got Mr. Cody, Devontae Martin, Luther King Rose. Yeah, I know. Gresh is looking at me like, what? Yeah. D black Twitter, man. They all been, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Black Twitter been giving him these black nicknames. So anyways, we got Cody Rhodes. We got my boy. Ricky Starks, absolute. Uh, we got Christian Cage, Roman Reigns, L.A. Knight, yeah. Becky Lynch, Rhea Ripley, Eddie Kingston, C.M. Punk, M.J.F., Seth Rollins, Jay Uso, Paul Heyman, Randy Orton, Adam Pierce, Alex Shelley, Santino Manella, and of course, Hangman Adam Page. So, uh, quite a heavy packed list there. So, uh, I guess I'm going to start things off since my boy Gresh went first. And uh, looking at this list, man, I ain't going to lie. Very interesting set of choices here. Very interesting set of choices. Uh, if I had to, if I had to, if I had to, I had to, I'm going to be real with y'all, man. And I'm going to say, I'm going to give this one to none other than Christian Cage, y'all. <laughs> Christian Cage. Why? I will explain my case very briefly and say, what hasn't this man done so absurdly other than be the best heel in 2K23? And when you're the best heel... A lot of times, why are you the best heel? Most times because of the absurd things that you say on the microphone. And this man has had no problem having no chill talking about people's fathers, <laughs> going low and telling people to go F themselves. I mean, this man has literally said every absurd thing that you could ever say as a heel. And he's gotten away with it. He's not canceled. He's not nothing. You just want to see him get beat down. That's all. Most times. Or you want him to be your dad, either or. Whatever the case is, Christian Cage gets my vote this year for best mic game. So, Gresh, who you got, brother? Well, we ain't have to worry about the wheel this time because I actually concur with your with your choice because Christian Cage has that way 
where it's like he can he has been on a mission to prove that he is the underrated of ENC. He is mm. the most underappreciated uh talent. He he plays that grizzled uh veteran very well to where it doesn't feel forced. It comes natural. He's basically you're the villain that he I feel like he should have been playing a long time ago, but it's better late. It's better he do, does it now than to do it prematurely. It's it's the time and place for everything. So Christian Cage is the best mic game, especially of the year 2023. So uh, I have no detect, no no disagreement with that. And as far as cancel culture is, I mean, mm, sorry, forget y'all. <laughs> I was about to finish my word. I had to catch myself. 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 I'm definitely going to edit it out. I'm definitely going to edit it out. But it's like, forget y'all. Forget forget y'all. Because at the same time, it's like, it's 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 the wrestling business. And it's like, he knows what to say. He knows how to get under your skin. Mm-hmm. No, and, he I, knows for, and he knows for a fact that people who complain on social media ain't going to say it to his face. So Very true on both accounts. And and you know what? It's it's just so funny because he, he makes it work and, and we're with it. You know what I mean? Like I said, nobody's trying to cancel Christian. We love Christian. We know who Christian is. If you're taking it that too seriously, then if you hate the man, he's doing his job correctly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's wrestling, baby. That's what it's all about. So um with that being said, we got those two categories going through. So uh let's look on through here. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna turn it over to Gresh real quick, let him kind of reveal a couple of viewers choices uh okay. categories and see what some of those winners were from the viewers choice categories. Okay, okay. Uh we might as well go ahead and start from the top. Uh we ended the viewers choice last week with the hater of the year which is Mm -hmm. apropos because who who won that one christian cage so we're gonna go ahead and switch it to the fan reaction of the year best fan reaction viewers choice and for those of you who don't know where we were able to vote it was you were able to vote on www.grushunleashed.com so best viewers choice best fan reaction excuse me of for this year had a total of 42 votes and Tied at number at two points apiece, The Rock returns to WWE on SmackDown September 2023. EO Sky wins the WWE Women's Championship SummerSlam 2023. Adam Copeland's AEW debut at AEW Wrestle Dream 2023, and Jay Uso attacks Jimmy Uso on SmackDown October 2023. And right sitting right at second place because we talked about CM Punk returning. CM Punk's return to WWE at Survivor Series 2023 got a, a wrecking 13 points with the winner of the best fan reaction of the year being Jay Uso pins Roman Reigns during Bloodline Civil War at Money in the Bank 2023 with an astounding 21 votes. So Ooh. congratulations to main event Jay Uso on snagging another award for this year's end of the year. He's this year's male breakout star. So now he has best fan reaction of the year. You want to do one more? Yeah, let's go ahead and give one more to the people real quickly from the viewer side of things. And then uh, all right, we'll get all right, all right, all right, all right. So for announced team of the year, viewers choice, we have a total of 43 points tied at one apiece is Ian Riccoboni and Caprice Coleman and Ton Hennefan and Matthew for TNA Impact Wrestling. Kevin Kelly, Nigel McGinnis, and Tony Schiavone. Michael Cole, Kevin Patrick, and Corey Graves both tie at two apiece. Michael Cole and Corey Graves for WWE pay-per-views at three, ap- at three points. And in second place is Michael Cole and Wade Barrett for WWE Raw at six points and winning with an astounding 28 points is none other than NXT's Vic Joseph and Booker T. Yeah. And they I like it was that. a landslide. Like I like don't... that. Yeah. And let's be real, Booker T and Vic, they've been they've been cooking this year on the on the comms. They really have, you know, despite hate that I hear sometimes Booker T gets on commentary from some people. Um we don't care know, about them. Yeah, I'm like how do you not love Booker T? He's charismatic. He does what he does, you know. But those same people are also ones that claim that JBL sucks at commentary, too. And I never understood that either because I always enjoyed him on commentary. He has his too. moments where he's annoying, but he never sucked. Yeah, he never sucked. Like, I'm like, y'all must not have heard 
some of these other commentators out here that were complete garbage. Boy. Okay. Like, there have been a lot. Of- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the, shout out to the viewers. Now, I will say I, I got one slight gripe. Uh oh. Even though with, with, the, with the viewers' choice, but shout out to the viewers because I appreciate y'all votes. But it's more so uh, to us producers out there, you know, how did we not – how did we not add the Sami Zayn turn on Roman Reigns in the bloodline from Royal Rumble? Like, that pop was crazy. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is they had the option to add it. Because I, I gave – these choices were my choices that I, that I got off the top done. But I always made sure I added – hey, you can input your own. And no one added Sami Zayn. Yo, that's crazy, y'all. Y'all got to go back and watch that Rumble, man. Like – I know that pop was crazy for sure. You know, and another this is, a, this is a case of a lot of stuff happened this year. People just genuinely forgot. <laughs> yeah, because that moment was like, bro, it was it was a. I remember that crowd erupting, bro. And then you know because it was like you knew it was gonna happen, but you didn't know when. And the, and just with the way that Roman was acting like such a jerk, mm-hmm. you know, like like no, you're gonna. So we're gonna make that sh- our honorable mention. Yeah, good honorable mention, you know. Um, and and Jay Uso actually could have won it twice because he had another moment with a crazy pop when he was in between. Should I join my brother or should I be on the side of Sami Zayn? And he he chooses, knows he chooses his brother. Yeah, remember yeah. when before I think that doing was a nominee for something else this year? Hmm, I hope it was, man, because I, I definitely didn't want that going under the radar for anybody, man, because that moment was crazy, too, because it for a Monday Night Raw reaction, that joint was crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a biggest surprise. Jay Uso chooses his brother over Sammy. That's right. We did have it in that category. So, OK, shout out to that, man. That could have been a good fan reaction as well in its own right. But shout out to the winner, Jay Uso, two time winner of 2K23 so far. You know, we're going to so see. Far. Some categories exist, so we'll see. Um, <clears throat> have we had any other multi winners so far? By the way, Gresh, let's let's see if we've had any. Mm-hmm. Other. Nina, Jay Uso. I think that's it. That's it. There are only multi winners for two K twenty. Okay, so far, right. yeah, so yeah. Far, we're gonna see what happens. But Athena, Jay Uso, and Christian. That's it. One thing I've noticed is our tribal chief has yet to win something, and I don't think he'll appreciate that by the end. I of mean, the he's show. never here, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Sorry, Travel T. The only thing that is consistent is his Roman Reigns returns next week. Mm, yeah, you're right. We'll see how that happens in 2K24. But uh, it's going to keep happening. <laughs> let's get back into our regular, regular category. So uh, we are all about giving flowers when it comes to these end of the year categories. And what better way than to talk about some of these divisions in yeah. the world? wrestling so first we're gentlemen's on these things you know what i'm saying uh again my co-hostess ashley's not here if she were here i'd probably have her introduce this category so mm-hmm. i'm gonna represent benny's block for a moment if she does not mind i'm gonna go ahead and go into the best women's division of the year ladies and gentlemen so we're gonna have a moment where we go through and we just talk about the ladies and let's see who has represented each respective company the best. So, without further ado, our nominees for Best Women's Division of the Year go to WWE with their main roster, so that includes SmackDown and Raw. Uh, WWE, which is their developmental roster, or however you want to view it these days, NXT. AEW, their main shows, of course, so that means Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage. And then, of course, we got AEW Ring of Honor, since they, you know, own Ring of Honor, we have to classified as that version um then next up we've got tna slash impact wrestling since it's been impact the majority of this year going into its new tna back in the uh next year form so tna impact wrestling and then next up we got mlw followed by our final nominee in this category in new japan pro wrestling slash stardom so without further ado Gresh, this time the ladies don't fall on me, man. You get to choose this one first. Oh, I'm telling you right out the gate. NXT. Based off Ooh. of what I watch, the best of what I watch is like, I, I, I appreciate the main roster because you got your 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 EO Skies, love her, Bianca, 
Charlotte, Hill Up Queen, and all these other uh, talents on SmackDown. Oscar, uh, mm-hmm. who else is on SmackDown? Mia Yim or Mishin, whatever they want to call her. And then on oh, Raw. <laughs> yeah, me and him. So that's what I'm like, or on on Raw, I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting somebody on SmackDown. On Raw, you got Becky, Rhea Ripley. Like I appreciate them. Piper Niven, Chelsea Green, uh, Casey Casey Catanzaro, and uh, Katana Katie. Chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh wait, no, Kaden Carter and Casey. Kaden Carter. <laughs> I call hey, it by government. My that's bad. A good, that's a good one. I was like, wait a minute. My bad. You, you, her real, spot, her, her gimmick that's name. Yeah, her gimmick name. <laughs> her gimmick name, I guess. But yeah. I was like, I appreciate the main roster, but it's just like their inconsistency with their booking kind of takes me out of it. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, but as far as NXT, I feel like it's one thing Shawn Michaels does, he's consistent with his booking. Even though some of them do be having you scratch your head sometimes, like Becky beating Tiffany Stratton and then Tiffany never getting a rematch. So it's kind of like, I mean, she got a rematch, but she like didn't win. But yet, like Raval, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So it's like little stuff that made me, it's not like, not even a knock on um, Lyra Valkyria either. It's more so it's just like, hmm, that's strange. But yeah. That doesn't take away my praise for NXT. So my vote is definitely NXT. Okay. Well, brother, it looks like we do not have a split decision in this instance because I, too, am going to go with you and say that NXT has definitely had the best women's division of 2K23. Now, granted, a nice second place to me would have been TNA slash Impact. Uh, you know, for the most part, Trinity's been holding it down and she's had some bangers with a lot of women going back and forth there. But for the most part, as we've mentioned, uh, the only thing I think that hurts impact uh, at the moment is just the TV deal most times uh, because mm-hmm. of not having all the access to watch access unless you have their t- uh, YouTube subscription or like I said, if you get if you support them enough to buy their pay-per-view matches, um, then a plus. Exactly. It's it's very hard to uh, get into it. So for the most part, I just want to say shout out to all these women's divisions, but specifically WWE NXT women's division for taking home the crown. Looking forward to seeing what that deep women's division does going into 2K24. Uh, <clears throat> so with that being said, let's move on to a- another aspect of things. We're going to switch it up a little bit. Now you see me and Gresh here. We're uh pretty swaggy guys, you know. We like to think we clean up pretty nicely, you know, and rock some things when we need to, you know what I'm saying? But this ain't about us because this is our show, this is our award show. So it's not about our swag. We want to know who we feel takes home a certain category. This is a new category, by the way. Uh brought to you in part by the collaboration of Gresh and highlight real but we bring to you guys the swag of the year award this is an award that really speaks for itself it's about you know when you when you present yourself as a superstar when you when you own television there's a certain package that you gotta have you know it's one thing to have in-ring ability it's one thing to have mic game but hey presentation matters too who got the best looks who come out there swagging it out every single week? Well, let's get into it and let's find out. So here's your nominees for Swag of the Year. We got the most must-see WWE superstar in the Miz from WWE. Of course, we got the, uh, <laughs> as you already know, uh, yeah, Seth knows where I'm going here. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, Gresh knows where I'm going here. I'm talking about Seth Rollins, the most outrageous of them all. That's going to be interesting to find out. Uh, we got Becky Lynch right behind him in WWE, followed by my boy Trick Williams from NXT. We got MJF from AEW. Carmelo Hayes from NXT. We got the Street Profits slash Bobby Lashley because, you know, I refuse to call them the Hurt Business 2.0. Therefore, until I know their actual names, I group them together as one. Therefore, meaning you got that. And Cora Jade, NXT. 
Lash Legend slash Jakara Jackson, WWE, Bailey, WWE, and of course, LA Knight. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go first on this one, man. I'm going right. to go, go first. I'm going to take it. Now, so, now, you see, there's a lot of different ways you can go here with this. A whole lot. A whole lot. But in an instance like this, I would say, whew, I ain't going to lie, man. I ain't going to lie. Your boy just might have to get this. <laughs> I'm gonna get this thing to. Oh boy, this is this is tough. This is tough. But I think I'm gonna go with the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley for Swag of the Year this year. I mean, Bobby already had his swag. Mm-hmm. The fact that he was able to take my guys, the Street Profits, especially who- Angelo. Especially Angelo, you know what I'm saying? Because the man wasn't known for wearing suits. He ain't wear suits like that. My boy wear sweats and, and, and you know, do his thing. Whatever. He was chill. My boy's got haircuts week after week, clean cuts, lineups, you name it. Coming out with just all kind of different swag. Looking good. Okay? Looking like some grown men. Okay? Straight up. Doing their thing. Like, they straight up. Like uh, how how my girl J- J- Janelle from HR say it? They went from dudes you 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 holler at. I'm paraphrasing. Dudes you holler at in the in the in the streets to dudes you holler at in the club or something like that. Some something along those lines. But yeah, uh, street profits. Bobby Lashley get my vote. So uh, Gresh, how about you, brother? Where you going with this? I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh... As much as I want to give it to like Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, and even Seth Rollins, I would have gave it to Seth Rollins, but he he lost me when he had that and when he attacked Drew McIntyre in that man blouse. So uh, he went because when he went from the Grinch to Prince, so I'm gonna have to give it to the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley. So it's an, it's another straight clean sweep vote right there because I feel like Bobby Lashley since I, well since he returned to WWE. I believe since they allowed him to wear suits on TV, which was, what was it, 2020, 2019, give or take, 2020, yeah. whenever the Hurt Business became, whenever he was with MVP, so yeah, 2020, and when they started letting him, like every single week, I'm like, bro, this dude is wearing suits I didn't even know existed, and then he he basically forced Angelo Dawkins to grow up and wear some suits, so, man... <laughs> It says a lot because it ain't easy to do that, by the way. I mean, you, you, you know, most time when men don't like suits, and because Shelton Benjamin didn't like suits, mm. he didn't like suits either. And, and look at the, how they got that man to clean up nice, you know. And, and once you do it, you start liking it. You're like, oh, you know what? I kind of kind of like this. Man, I'm always wearing, I'm always buying suits, new suits almost every two weeks. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, mm-hmm. shout out, shout out to these guys, man, for real. The transformation is is amazing now i just need the rest of everything to catch up to the presentation i'm still waiting to see what 2k24 holds in store for these gentlemen uh first off a name yeah i i I need a name uh i don't know what happened they had brianna brandy aka bfab they had her it looked like it was going to be something i don't know where that's gone i don't know what's happening yet the presentation is there we just need everything else to now form in 2k24 please thank you very much. Uh, so without further ado, congrats to the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley for taking home swag of the year, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let's get on into the next category. Um, it's quite simple. We're going to come back to our divisions now. Now, funny thing about this next category is it, it's a little bit of a tricky one. Because I ain't going to lie, it's been a bit of a challenge in most cases with this category, but it's debatable. This is going to be interesting to see which one we choose, but we're going to take it to the tag team division, y'all. And everybody loves a good tag team. I know I appreciate good tag team wrestling, you know, when you got bangers on top of bangers on top of bangers. So without further ado, let's, let's get into it and see what nominees we got for best tag team division of the year company wise all right so first up we got wwe main roster as we said with the women's division that includes smackdown and raw uh we got wwe nxt 
We've got AEW main shows, Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage. We've got AEW, Ring of Honor, TNA slash Impact Wrestling, MLW, and New Japan Pro Wrestling slash Stardom. Without further ado, Gresh, I'm going to let you go ahead and start this thing off, man. Who takes best tag team division of the year? I ain't going to lie to you. It's not, it's, I can tell you right now, it's probably not. Man, if I had to go straight based off of like from the beginning of the year to now, it won't be main roster because I feel like w- once they unified those titles, it kind of became non-existent mm-hmm. to where tag teams were getting pretty much nothing to work with. Like the street profits were literally floating around until they linked up with Bobby. Um, NXT, uh, they have a pretty s- solid division. Like you got, uh, as much as I don't like these guys because they bore me, but you got Gallus, you got OTM, you got the family, you got uh, who else? What's there? Who who else is on the tags? It's a it's a couple. It's a, uh, it's slipping my brain. Oh, uh, Chase, you like you got all these solid tag teams and all this stuff that that are there, and then also it's like, and the, also there is some type of type of choices that Sean makes as far as like who's the champions this week or that week kind of throws me off. Mm-hmm. But and as far as AEW is concerned, I, I've noticed a slight dip in the quality of the tag team division. Mm-hmm. Uh, they like Young Bucks are gone or pretty much gone for now. Uh, they had something with the Golden Jets, but Kenny unfortunately went down. So that that ended. Um Lucha Bros and all these other people, like they're stagnant between Ring of Honor and AEW TV. And so it's like, but as far as I can tell you, as far as consistency is concerned, I will probably have to vote for TNA on this one. Man, brother, you must have read my mind. And this is how you know you and me are not only very observant, not only do we somehow in our schedules catch all the wrestling that we do. uh, And And they want me to catch more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. As if we don't have enough, y'all. But still, um, you and me are on the same accord, brother. There is no need for the will on this one. That is like, what, three straight categories in a row now? We haven't had the will yet since mm-hmm. the first category. But I, too, am going to go with TNA Impact or TNA slash Impact Wrestling because, uh, like you said, I mean, the ABC, the Motor City Machine Guns, uh, Moose and Brian Myers, uh, I forgot what they called themselves, the professional wrestling gods, uh, as the, the, that's what they nicknamed themselves there. And and just, the, <laughs> but hey, it works for them. It's, it's, it's golden for those guys. They, they work. They do work really well together. And, and it's just so funny with their dynamic. I never would have thought that was a pairing I needed, but they were good together. And they put on bangers uh, with other tag teams. Uh, but there are so many tag teams. Rascals. In- the Rascals, exactly. I mean, shout out to the man, you know, shout out to Nash being able to bounce back. I figured he'd find his way back, uh, back home in a sense. Uh, and he's flourishing because that's that's where it all started. You know, there, there wouldn't be that NXT if it wasn't for the Rascals and TNA. So uh, shout out to that. And I mean, yeah, the tag team division there is just young, it's deep, it's experienced. You got a mixture of young tag teams, current prime tag teams, and even some older tag teams that can still go. Uh, so with that being said, it's a no-brainer. Uh, NXT is probably a good close second, as you mentioned, with their tag teams. Uh, AEW, a little bit kind of up and down right now with their stuff right now. It's kind of, you know, at one point, that was their that was supposed to be their focus, their bread and butter, and yet somehow they got lost. lost the clock. Yeah, um, and WWE is trying to get back, you know, maybe next year it'll be a little more uh, challenging because I see them – starting to form tag teams again. But like you said, that they got to figure out what they're doing about this unification situation. Either we give us one set of belts or, or split them up again, something. Whatever you're going to do, let's figure that out, Triple H. But that being said, um, yeah, we're going to turn this thing back over to Gresh and go back to the viewers category on things, man. So uh, what the viewers saying on some of their categories? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So next up, we have the viewer's choice for pay-per-view match of the year. 
We mm-hmm. obviously gave our pay per view match of the year, so we might as well give them their their opportunity to voice their opinion. Uh, tied at one apiece is Cla- uh, someone put Clash at the Castle for some reason, even though that was last year. So that is completely disqualified. <laughs> Read. Thank you. Uh, tied at one apiece, Swerve Strickland versus Adam Page at AEW Full Gear 2023. Mm-hmm. Athena versus Willow Nightingale, Ring of Honor. You saw we gave praise to that uh, mm-hmm. at one at Ring of Honor, and then Jay Uso. Versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam 2023 and Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte at WrestleMania 39 all got one apiece. At six points, we have Drew McIntyre versus Gunther versus Sheamus from WrestleMania 39. At eight points, we have Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega 2 at AEW Forbidden Door 2. And then at second place, we have the Usos versus Roman and Solo at Money in the Bank 2023 with nine points. And taking the the the, the entire category is none other than MJF versus Brian Danielson in an Iron Man match at AEW Revolution 2023 at 10 points. So Ooh. they agree with us. They well, they agree with the will. They agree with me because you picked another one. They agree with the will and me. With MJF versus Brian Danson in the Iron Man match being the viewers' choice pay per view of the year, and then we'll do one more, and then we're going to move right back to our main one, and that is we're going to stick it to to the matches as viewers' TV match of the year with a total of thirty four points overall. Tied at one apiece is Brody King versus Eddie Kingston in AEW. Okay. Someone voted. Bloodline versus RKO and LA Knight with the return of AJ Styles, even though that wasn't a match, that was a segment. So that's immediately disqualified. Uh, Fatal Four Way match at NXT, they didn't specify which one. So, okay. Uh, at second place is Gunther versus The Miz on Raw with five points. And tied and, and taking it basically at a landslide is Gunther versus Chad Gable. In WWE at 26 points. They did throw on some good bangers together. I will say, yeah, that that that's a good one. That's a real good one. All right. All right. Shout out to the viewers' choice categories, man. Um, those were amazing choices, mostly for the most part, with those nominees. And uh, y'all gonna make me look at this this Iron Man match one more time. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm gonna go back and revisit it since we're still a little <laughs> bit into 2K23. Probably by the time you hear this, it might already be 2K24. But in the case of uh, if it is by the time you hear this, I'll still go back and watch it and let y'all know how I felt about it. Like, okay, maybe I changed my pick. I don't know. But anyways, uh, let's get into the next category. Now, this category takes I'm in your corner to so many new heights. Okay. I mean, this this is the category I, I hold most important to my soul because at the end of the day, you know, it's nice to have somebody representing you, you know, saying, I got your back. Don't worry. They handle your contracts. They handle your yeses and no's. They make sure you get your money. They make sure that if you can't be there, they standing in there to basically handle business while you away on business, either or. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about none other than the Advocate of the Year. This is a returning category. Uh, Shout out to you guys who enjoyed this one. Uh, With that being said, we got the Advocate of the Year. So none other than, uh, what is this, his his second, third straight time being in this category? I mean, the guy is so seasoned. He's arguably the greatest of all time. Why wouldn't he be in this category automatically? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about none other than Paul Heyman, first up. Next ladies up, and gentlemen, there you go. You know what it is. Hey, uh, next up from that, <laughs> I guess I should do my dance with this one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got none other next up than Prince Nana <laughs> as advocate of the year. And of course, we got next up Don Callis, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most hated advocates at the moment. Uh, and of course, shout out to a friend of this very podcast, shout out to my sis, doing amazing things, Miss Selena De La Renta in MLW 
adding that spice out there, being a true boss like she is. And of course, we can't forget someone who's a little new in this category because she just got her feet wet in this company, but still she made the cut just enough to be considered in this category. I'm talking about none other than C.J. Perry, formerly known as Lana. Who, Lana? E W. Yes, 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 yes. So, without further ado, as you can see, this is kind of a short category of list of categories because I couldn't really bring up any other uh, advocates that are really of importance at the moment. I mean, I know some might say, well, what about uh, what's his name, Martin? Uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about in AEW, you know, Smart Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, represented Jade Cargill at one point, now represents, I think, Tony Nese and all the, you know, he. He's someone that, you know, oh, I can't take him serious right now because he can't take his opponent seriously. You know what I mean? Uh, I see our boy is getting back into an advocate role. I couldn't put him in this category, though, because he's been. Big Stoke. Samson. Yes. So hopefully next year when we do this category, Big Stoke can elevate and uh, we'll get him in this category for next year. But uh, currently this is locked in with those that we had. So like I said, anyone that didn't make this category either just wasn't relevant enough for us to really put them in here right now given to their clientele or we just haven't seen enough of them to really know what their work has been doing so that being said uh i'm turning this over to gresh now to say gresh who well actually no i i, I think i'll kick this off because you kicked off the last category so this is yeah, me. okay oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so so i'm gonna start things off and i'm gonna say my choice for advocate of the year on this one Woo, man, I ain't gonna lie. This feels like it's not even a contest low key, but I'm, I'm making this a fun contest by acting like it because all these guys have done great. Uh, <laughs> but the obvious choice to me has gone none other than to Mr. Prince Nana as advocate of the year because this man has single-handedly gone over. He has elevated Swerve uh, among Swerve elevating himself. I mean, the dance, man. He's got white folks in the crowd doing the swerve dance. Off uh, beat. Off beat. <laughs> That's beside the point, Gresh. I know, but no, that is the point. <laughs> <laughs> but my boy came out with a whole dance team, you know what I'm saying? Uh making it official that this is a legit dance. Uh he's hilarious. I mean, literally, when Hangman's like, I'm going to steal your weed, he's like, no, you won't. No, you won't. After literally denying that he had no weed in the first place. So, man, listen, Nana is golden. He is amazing. He's a great human being in real life as well. So with that being said, I, it was just, it was apparent. But again, second place to me would be my homegirl, Selena De La Renta. Now, I know she might be a little mad at me. I ain't pick her. I'm sorry. I still love you, girl. Keep doing your thing in MLW. I just couldn't not give this to Nana. So I'm going to give it over to Gresh and see who Gresh got in this category. I would have gave it to Paul Hammond, but he's never there because Roman is never there. And he and it's like when Roman's not there, or if he is there, Roman is not the focal point. Mm -hmm. And it's like he's not really, he's not, they're not really giving him bread and butter post WrestleMania. But if I had to give my unanimous vote of confidence, I would have to take this hand. Ball it up into a fist. Take this other hand. Ball it up into a fist. And start sore. Sore. You lost your mind. Talk room. Catch a fire. Catch a foot. When I try, be pressure. I fly. Ain't no way you won't so far. Yeah, swear. When I try. Yeah, swear. When I try. Yeah, swear. When I try. Prince Nana. It makes the most sense. And it's not even just because he helped elevate Swerve. It's like, even when he's out there with the gates of agony, mm -hmm. he's still you 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 pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. He's relevant. He's and he, it's like he doesn't take away from anybody. Anybody who tells you that he's taking away from somebody, they're just haters. Because if you actually pay attention to how he is and what he like, and I can also appreciate like the way that he uh, just brings a different presence to us. Like Paul Heyman, he's great on the mic. He reacts to everything that happens in the ring. Nana does the same. Same thing to Rhea Ripley, because even though she's the talent, she has her advocate moments, too, where she it's like th that's a lost art mm -hmm. when you're at ringside. It's like you don't have to just stand there and look all serious, like do something. Mm -hmm. Add to the, the presentation. Don't don't take away or make it boring. 
No, seriously. And that's the reason why we couldn't really put Mark Sterling on here either, because he doesn't re- he didn't really add to the presentation for me. Mm-hmm. Whether it was with Jay Cargill or Tony Nese. So it's like Prince Nana was the obvious choice. Yeah, man. Um, I agree, brother. And, and and shout out again to all advocates out there. Um, hopefully you guys uh step it up because it is a lost art form, as as you mentioned, Gresh. Like it's almost like both companies, uh mainstream companies anyways, it's almost like they're losing the fact of like, hey, you know, what made wrestling golden in the 80s and, and in the 90s was the fact you had dope managers who didn't have to do much to be over. They they just were themselves or they were what they chose to be to elevate the character of who they were. And, you know, that got lost over the years, maybe because of the whole professional wrestling aspect of things. But managers Mm -hmm. add to the entertainment side by interacting with fans, doing certain gestures. Paul Heyman is always great with his facial expressions when it's a near fall or dare I say, uh, it looks like someone is about to beat Roman. Just you name it, uh, anything. So, just little deets. So uh, shout out to these great peoples in the Advocate of the Year. Our winner is Prince Nana from AEW and Ring of Honor as well. So uh, that being said, we are going to go back to a division. Uh, well, actually, no, we did that already. I'm sorry. That was a botch on my part, peoples. Uh, but <laughs> um, let's go into a nice set of uh, this category is very interesting and special because 2K23 has been nothing but bangers uh, for the most part. I mean, granted, yeah, we've had some some flakes uh, in between, of course. We've had some forgettable moments from all these companies. But let's talk about some feuds, man, because what makes wrestling so legendary is when you think about the feuds in life. You think about Stone Cold versus The Rock or Hogan versus Macho Man or or you name it. I mean, it's just there's so many feuds you can go down the list of. Uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Uh, you know, it, I mean, you go down the list. There are so many, right? But with that being said, let's get into our feud of the year because I feel like we have some dope feuds. So first up, matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and you know, well, I'm gonna turn this over to Gresh as I read these categories. But for our nominees with feud of the year, we've got. Swerve versus Hangman Adam Page, AEW, Sami Zayn, Roman Reigns, WWE, CM Punk versus AEW. Ooh, that's a feud. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> Bray Wyatt, RIP, my friend, versus LA Knight. Yeah. yeah. The Miz. Versus L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Alexander versus Bully Ray from Impact Wrestling. And last but not least, Brian Danielson versus Ricky Starks in AEW. So I'm going to turn this thing over to Gresh. And Gresh, you tell the people who in your mind had feud of the year. Mm, I would probably, I would, mm, this is a good one because it's like, I feel like Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns feud technically started in 2022 mm-hmm. and it didn't really, and it, and it, and it, it's like, it didn't really, it's like, it was it really a feud or was it like, because it was a one-off match? Like, I don't know. Usually. Okay. So I like the view. Because he turned on them in a rumble, and then they had the the mania, and then Sammy just I mean they had the elimination chamber, then Sammy shifted right. to the Usos. And and I like to say when I say these, I kind of look at it as because that's a good point. Feuds usually involve two or more matches, like a like a best of. That'd be me. Like I, like one match don't really seem like a feud. It just feels like a. But match. the reason why I would put that in that category is because of the buildup. And how that felt like more than one match, if it makes sense, you know, like that match mm-hmm. was the payoff to what was just so inevitable in that moment. You know what I mean? Because as you mentioned, it started in late 2022. You knew it was going to come, but you didn't know when, you didn't know how, and you didn't know where. But you could feel that there was few there. So right. that's why I kind of classify that in there technically. But I, I do. That's why I kind of did that. But the reason why I, the reason why I asked that because that's my my vote. Because I feel like from an emotional point of view, that was more, I can invest with that mm-hmm. more. 
And it's like my second place obviously will be uh Swerve and Hangman because their match at Russell Dream and then at then the full gear mm-hmm. match was two classics in my book. Okay. So but I'm definitely gonna have to go from an emotional standpoint, only because of, because I was invested in it from Sammy joining the bloodline to turn it on the bloodline to the match at Elimination Chamber. So that's my vote. Okay. Hmm. Man, this is tough. Uh, there's a lot of categories in here that I would love to. I mean, out of these nominees, there's so many I want to choose. And I'm kind of like you. I'm trying to figure out which way I would go. And you know what? I think I'm going to go with this one only because, unfortunately, when we talk about emotional, this one's emotional for both what it was and what it ended up being in real life. So part of me is probably picking this off of heart reasons, but unfortunately I will have to split because I, I would love to go with that, but we're gonna have to give this one to the wheel, but I'm going to go with Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight. And even though I know that was kind of a one-time thing, uh, going back to what we were saying, you know, and that'll be a future category. So we'll, this is a new one. And going forward, we'll try to make this based off two or more matches as the, as we'll evolve, yeah, it'll evolve as if they've had two or more matches, but Given the significance, I had to say Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight because unfortunately this was Bray Wyatt's final feud before he went on and went away uh, and to the other side. So because of the emotional aspect of it, the fact that LA Knight evolved from this feud, but Bray Wyatt was also telling us his story and what he was trying to get before the unfortunate illness came and kind of sidelined things. This feud feels different now in how it aged from what it was at that time. Uh, so with that, let's go to the wheel. Let's see what the wheel has to say on who took home feud of the year. And go. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. That is how you know the wheel is on the side of the man that we no longer have. The winner for Feud of the Year goes to L.A. Knight and Bray Wyatt. Wow. The 2023 Unleashed Legend. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. That is great. That, so that technically, what, does it make him a multi-winner? It doesn't make it a one-time winner. The Unleashed, Le- the Unleashed Legend, the Hall of Fame of our end of the year awards is pretty much it's 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 pretty much us giving them their flowers True. postpartum True. but not postpartum post post passing i don't want to say because postpartum is pregnancy i don't even know why i said postpartum <laughs> but gosh, brother, post, go with it it's cool <laughs> but but post like it's basically us giving them after they've gone on go, as the as the southern church pay, people say they've gone on the glory so that's basically us giving them flowers but you can Technically, say this is a multi because this is this is one of Bray's final. The Unleashed Legend was more so a tribute to mm-hmm. Wyndham. The, the, this feud of the year is more so a tribute to Bray, the mm-hmm. character. One last time. Agreed, so, agreed. well, ladies and gentlemen, we're narrowing down to the end of the show, uh, and and the end of the overall collab of the year, end of the year awards, ladies and gentlemen, like. Uh, Crazy categories, man, for sure. Uh, it, these categories alone just show how dope 2K23 has been. And, uh, you know, shout out to some of these new categories. Make sure you let us know how you feel about some of the new ones, which ones you'd like to see return, and which ones you'd be like, eh, it was cool for that year, but, I, you know, let that let that stay to the side. All right, cool. And we'll definitely keep a, keep an open mind on it, too, because some, some categories I saw that we did in 2020 never return mm-hmm. again until this year because i was like oh yeah we did do that Let's yeah back. yeah for sure and that's the beauty of why we do what we do with these end of the year awards ladies and gentlemen so 
Given the fact this one's special, but before I get into it, uh, you know, given what we're in our final two categories here, uh, Gresh, are there any left for the viewers out there? We, let's turn it over to the viewers. We, we got one more for the viewers, but we, you want to save that one for last because it's the MVP. One. Ah, yes, we'll save that one for last since that is the MVP because that is what matters the most. So, uh, let's just get into these final two categories before we get into our final viewers' choice category. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's final three. three. Okay, we got three. We got three. Let's see what we're missing. Yeah, yeah. Which one? Which one are we missing? We got theme, we got catchphrase, ah, and we got yes. bye. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You know what? Yeah, so I'm glad you said that. Let's get into it. Well, how could I forget you, buddy? I can't forget you. Okay, so uh <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I enjoy a nice bop. Gresh enjoys a nice bop. I know you guys enjoy a nice bop, right? I mean, so it's just fitting. For this category next up, ladies and gentlemen, um, this category is very near and dear to me as someone who is not only just a podcast host, but an actual artiste of artists when it comes to the music game. And one thing I can appreciate is a good theme song. For the, the, the values of this category basically go off all of these. these. These are the criteria for this category. It goes off of bop level. It goes off of crowd reaction every time you hear this bop and it also goes off of just how you never get tired of hearing it i mean it can age well by for that matter um not to mention this also goes off the fact that you know unfortunately in modern day this is all death rubble mostly uh mostly mostly but <laughs> i know that, that makes gresh excited but you know ladies and gentlemen Let's get into it. None other than the theme of the year, y'all. Theme of the year. Oh, we got quite a bit of stacked nominees on this category. So let's get right on into this thing. You know it. You know it. All right. So first up, we got Jimmy Uso, born a king. I was born a king. Now I'm back. It started off like a Disney song and then it switched to switch it up. All right. Next up, we got none other than my boy, Trick Williams, locked in. From NXT. Oh, that trick. Oh, that trick. What? Oh, that trick. Yeah. Oh, that trick. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is such a bop. That is love. I love it. I love it. I love it. Next up. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Next up, we've got Big Pressure by my boy Swerve Strickland from AEW. Why me? Top rope, catch a vibe, wood, little dry, uh, pressure, I fly in the ring. You want some fire? Then I swerve when I try. Yeah, I swerve when I try. It, 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 you ain't me, you lost your mind. Top rope, catch a Five, catch a foot when I drop it. Pressure, I apply in the ring. You lost your mind. Then I swear when I drop. Yeah, I swear when I drop it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Swerve Strickland, Big Pressure next up. We got none other than Trinity from TNA Impact by Russell Flow. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? So, ladies and gentlemen, we got Trinity uh, from TNA Impact. Next up, we got Monet by Mercedes. Monet. 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 Money. Money. All right. Next up, 
This is probably going to be a popular favorite, ladies and gentlemen. We got Jay Uso main event is. Ooh, it's just me, Goose. It's just. Hey, hey, hey. hey main event Jay Uso now in your city. Woohoo! It's just me, Ooh. Okay. Day one, it's just me, Ooh. All right. Day one, it's just me, Ooh. Uh huh. Day one, it's Zen, light them all up and knock them down like this. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yes, sir. And then next up, ladies and gentlemen, we've got. Welcome to LA, LA night, LA. <laughs> yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Next up, we got Taking It All by Solo Sokoa. <laughs> taking it all. Settle the score. No one will not take it all. Taking it all. We the world. You're the knocking the door. Taking it all. <laughs> Ah, I ain't been destined to win. Alpha Omega the end. Let it begin. Give you the scoop through my lens. I don't even follow no trends. You see the light. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we got Grayson Waller's Eye on the Prize. Boom, boom, boom. That's the <laughs> blackest <laughs> song for a white guy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> When I lay low, lay low, you go down when I say so. I say so. When I know when I lay low, I lay low. <laughs> the blackest song I ever seen. Like, bro, you know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that definitely does not fit him, but it does at the same time. So, <laughs> it does at the same time because so it's not. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up we've got Oscar. You can't hide. <laughs> Your destiny is written all over the sky. You can't. My name. I am the future of your sorrow. Take your time. It's too late. I'm already living your tomorrow. You can't. Hide. Whew, boy. All right. Next up, we got. Melo, don't miss Carmelo Hayes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, Melo, don't miss y'all. Uh, next up, we've got Rhea Ripley, Demon in Your Dreams. This is my brutality. I eat sleep. I eat sleep. Look at my eyes. You look alive. Look. Look at my eyes. You just do a die. Look at my ass, it's just looking blind. Shout out to my guy Gresh for the special effects, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all give it up for him. Give it up for him. <sighs> all right, all right. Next up, we got Sami Zayn, Worlds Apart. Oh, the, 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 that's, that's that preacher song. Is it? You know how you get how you give a praise uh -huh. break? <laughs> if you play that song, <laughs> no, as soon as it breaks break down, it's like. Dun, dun, I want to hear a church musician do that now. Now you got God dang, I can't hear that the same. Now. I want to get with some, get some keyboarders and organ players and be like, hey, I need you to do this real quick. Every time I'm in the gym and that come, come on, I'll be, I'll just be like, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, y'all. Next up, we've got 
prepare to fight by none other than Gunther slash Imperium. <laughs> All right, next up. Oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Kingdom by Cody. Devante Martin Luther King Jr. Rhodes. Wrestling has more than one royal family. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> At the garden lights come out I'm home Oh wow <laughs> My father said <laughs> When I was younger Oh I love it What I did that I made <laughs> And then next up we've got Aussie Open with Aussie 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 from A. Aussie 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 I, I. That's twerking music. <laughs> well, they love their they they do love their twerking music there. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, shout out, shout out, Mikey you know, you, hey, you know. Uh, next up, we've got Orange Cassidy with Jane at AEW. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics. No, nah, but it's a, it's a bop though. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> all right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, we've got "Harder Heart" by Miss Julia Hart. The house always wins. So when that beat drop, I'll be like, "Huh." Oh, oh. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm not a singer, but I'm like, yeah, I'll be harming. I'll be singing like I'm in the choir, in, in the shower. <laughs> Next up, y'all, we've got Pretty Deadly on and on. Hey, yes, boy. On and on, on and on. You saw on and on, on and on. You saw on and on, on and on. Because the night is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. Uh oh. Oh Lord, this might be a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Jambea. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> I am not about to butcher that language. No, no, sir. You're not about to get, you're not about to get the Puerto Rican. No, nah, you're not about to get them coming after me. No. <laughs> For the final, well, nominee in this category, this was a fun one because I wonder if this is the modern day Judas in, in Gresh's mind right now. But nonetheless, we've got Visionary by Seth freaking Rollins. <laughs> Like it, it bops and then it, then the beat goes fast and I just I just zone out. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very stacked, pun intended, stacked list of category of nominees in this category for theme song of the year. Not gonna lie, this is gonna be a hard one. Probably the hardest of all of these categories because of how much we appreciate and love good music. Therefore, unfortunately, Gresh gets the task of starting this one off. So Gresh. Sir, we already picked. We already picked it. Like it's, it's the whole thing. <laughs> John Bear, ah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> That's my pick. You know what? I have a rival for it. I do. I do okay. have a rival. This might be the will, ladies and gentlemen. Gresh is queuing it up because I have a rival, and this is such a great category that I don't even mind this going to the wheel because whoever wins, I'm perfectly fine with it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am choosing none other than Big Pressure. 
I swerve, Strickland. Hey, man, it's been over all year. So now we get to see which one takes home the crown for theme song of the year. Are you ready, Gresh? Let's do it. Oh, let's go. Garments, top bro, catch a five, catch a foot, what I drive, be pressure, I'll buy, ain't no winning. And I swear, and I'm sorry, 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 and i am sorry and i am Big pressure. All right, all right, all right. So now without further ado, we got we're down to two final categories, including one last viewer's choice. Y'all, we are almost at the finish line. Being that said, y'all know the name of the show. Y'all know the name of the show. So you know, you, you can't not have this category given the title of this very show. And ladies and gentlemen, as great. As 2K23 has been in the year of pro wrestling, there is always, and I do mean there is always, a botch or two to pick for this very category. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about none other than the botch of the year. And Lord knows, trust me, this is a category that I hold near and dear, not just because of the name of the show, but because of the fact that it's almost hard to pick one, because there's so many. You can go so many different ways. You can go something that was misset on the mic. You can go from a mishap in the ring. You could go from a bevy of things. It could be a production botch. It's a lot of things that we have had happen with botch of the year. But I narrowed it down to these categories. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So first up, we've got Michael Cole. Michael Cole calling Candice LeRae, Candice Michelle, and the... <laughs> oh, boy. Somebody was in the wrong decade, y'all. <laughs> he thought he was in the Divas era for a second. Michael Cole in his bag all year commentating-wise, but even he, the GOAT, one of the GOATs, can make mistakes, and that was a funny one. I'm not even going to lie. So, with that being said, I have another Michael Cole botch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Shout out to Gresh's facial expressions. All right, next up, Michael Cole calls DIY DYI. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to Wade Barrett being so freaking time. He said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I love how he, whenever Michael Cole makes a macho commentary, he rubs it in in a very cool way where it's like, yeah, you know, it is very hard to do yourself in when you do it yourself. And I'm like, man, come on, this guy. Uh, <clears throat> next up, this was probably my favorite. It might be my winner. I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, Speaking of stuck in a different decade, this next commentary individual was stuck probably in the 90s at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Schiavone accidentally thinks he's still in WCW on commentary when he accidentally mentions WCW on AEW television. Shout out to Taz for being able to catch that and be able to put that in. Oh, Tony, we love you, man. That that was hilarious, man. Well, next up, we got WWE production as they played Nia Jax's music before the Royal Rumble clock timed out. She was the number 30th entry, and the clock botched as the clock counted, but the music hit before the clock could even sound off. Wow. Giving away the surprise before it even happened. Well, next up, ladies and gentlemen, we've got The Miz losing his verbal footing on the SmackDown before Royal Rumble promo, where he, uh, you know, 
literally was trying to recall certain things and he just couldn't really get his footing. He couldn't find what he was trying to say and had to laugh on mid-air television trying to emphasize his point. Next up, this one hurts my heart because this is actually not just the first time this has happened. We've had him in this category even last year. And it continues. Ladies and gentlemen, Kofi Kingston with his second straight Royal Rumble elimination botch. <sighs> Kofi, 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 man. <clears throat> well, yeah. Going to the next nominee in this category, we've got Kevin Owens, who botched a moonsault at the Royal Rumble against Roman Reigns when he darn near killed himself by kind of slipping and tumbling off the ropes going backwards. And finally... This one's very ironic and dear because of the fact that not only did he accidentally mention this match, but he went on to eventually win this match and is currently holding the title of this very, very award. Damian Priest mixes up the Elimination Chamber match with the Money in the Bank match in a promo. So he basically prophesied it to you guys that he was going to win the money in the bank before he even won the money in the bank. It's almost as if they just said, no, we're going to have to give it to you now because you actually thought you were at the money in the bank during the elimination chamber. Ladies and gentlemen, those are your nominees for botch of the year. Oh, boy. Oops, my bad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And you know what? God, there's so many to choose from here, and I'm not going to lie to you, man. I kind of want to go with Tony Schiavone accidentally thinking he was still in <laughs> WCW because if that didn't tell you, when you talk about number two companies and you talk about how some people compare AEW to WCW these days, if mm -hmm. that didn't tell you enough of what you need to know based off the news and rumors you've heard about backstage drama in AEW over the years, specifically this year, uh, that right there told me Tony Schiavone must be thinking, man, am I back in WCW again? And he actually probably just had that out loud thought and just was like, oh, crap, wait a minute. No, I'm totally in AEW. This is totally not 1997. Like, this is definitely 2023. Uh, Gresh, sir, I know, man, tons of botches. But out of these, what you going with that you think is just can't miss? <laughs> Michael Cole calling Candice LeRae Candace <laughs> <the shit. laughs> He called me. He say, what? What's my name? Uh, Oops. Like, bro, I've been watching wrestling since I was a kid. Hearing two, Candice Michelle in 2023 threw me off. I'm like, <laughs> she's back? <laughs> <laughs> now, keep in mind, everybody who don't know, I, I, I partake in cannibal libations so I, I i take in uh herbal libations to get through wrestling so uh if you want to know what herbal libations is weed but when you imagine somebody under the influence of of herbal libations hearing that in 2023 you start having a conumption, like your brain just starts glitching. Cause I'm like, is it 2007 or is it 2023? So mm. Michael Cole got my vote. Well, all right. So uh, go ahead and take that thing to the wheel, regardless of botches and botch. And it's not about how you botch and why you botched. It's the fact that you botched and you lived up to it and learned. So uh, <clears throat> let's see which one of these two botches actually takes home the crown for botch of the year. Tony Schiavone or Michael Cole, ironically, both on commentary. Let's go. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like your winner is. See, the wheel was even thrown off. Exactly. <laughs> they say, is it 2007 or 2020? <laughs> All right. So, Michael Cole. Sir, you take home botch of the year. Uh, congrats to you, sir. It definitely does not take away from your resume. It's just for funs and giggles at the fact that, hey, even the goats can mess up at times. Therefore, that leads us to our final category. We are finally at the end, ladies and gentlemen, after a phenomenal two 
part end of the year awards with everything that's happened in this wonderful, amazing year. Uh, and I feel like we missed a lot, but you know, hey, we're two we're two people. If you want to help out, out, vote on the viewers' choice. Thank you, thank you. You know what I'm saying? It took a lot of hard work to get all these nominees and categories and all that good stuff. So believe me, with a lot of years of wrestling, it ain't easy I'm trying to remember all. And we're men; we forget exactly. things. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, but with this, one thing you don't forget—I'll tell you this much: you don't forget catchphrases. Why? Nope. Because they're so catchy half the time you can't help but know it's coming it's the punchline of all punchlines when you know it's being set up you know what to expect and you know what to do and the crowd knows when to sing along therefore catchphrase of the year ladies and gentlemen we got nominees lined up for this one and with that being said uh let's go ahead and get right on into it first up we've got a uh, thank you and shush, shush, please, Chad Gable and the Alpha Academy. Next up, we've got insert city, the acclaim have arrived. Scissor me, daddy ass, yeah, you know, from the acclaimed in AEW. <clears throat> Next up, we've got, for the ladies out there, if Ash were here, I would have her say this one, but still, you know, so, you know I, I don't have these. Gresh doesn't have these, but still, we'll just say it like this. <clears throat> Chin up, chest out, and watch for the shoe. Yeah, Miss Timeless. Tony Storm. Next up, we've got... <clears throat> I don't have a neck brace on me, so I just have to cover my neck like this. Adam! Adam! Ladies and gentlemen, Roderick, my neck strong, strong with Adam. And of course, next up, this one... <laughs> might possibly be the winner in Gresh's eyes, but who knows? We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got <clears throat> yeah. Yeet. Yeah. Yeet. Yeah. Yeet. <laughs> None other than Jay. Ooh, so. And of course, last but not No Yeet. <laughs> By Jimmy. Uh, <clears throat> so, last but not least, We've got probably the most over catchphrase of them all, depending on, <laughs> yes, depending on who you're asking, depending on where you're at. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by Mr. L.A. Knight, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, that about wrap yeah. for your... <laughs> Catchphrase of the year. Those are your nominees. So none other. I'm going to turn this thing over to my boy, Gresh. Despite what Highlight may believe, Yeet is not my vote. And the reason why I say that is because it came out in 2014. We stopped saying that in our everyday life in 2015 when Vine died. So <laughs> if we're going to be real here, as much as I joke jokingly say it, Yeet is in my vocabulary every day. Yeah, it is. So my vote <laughs> is none other than L.A. Knights. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I see you, dog. I knew I was going to throw you uh, off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, let's keep that train running because at the end of the day, I have to give my boy something. He's actually, well, no, because he's actually won a category. He shares with Bray Wyatt for Feud of the Year. So, I guess this now mm -hmm. puts him in the multi-winner category, y'all. My boy, L.A. Knight, with everybody saying, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for all of our nominees. And now, we turn it over to my man, Gresh, with the final viewer's choice Award, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So just because we we, celebrate, we laugh around at botches and give everybody their props, 
One thing that a lot of people don't really give get don't really give praise to in wrestling is being the most valuable player. No matter the company you're in, no matter no matter what how long you've been in the industry, it's always that one year where you're literally just you you don't miss. You're undeniable. You're untouchable. You basically show up and show out. Once that bell rings, you are under, undoubtedly the best in the game at this point in time. So. But this year, for the very first time, we decided to let you guys choose your own MVP, and likely we're going to agree. For the first time ever, wrestling M- Res- viewers' choice wrestling's MVP of the year, tied at one apiece, or is Orange Cassidy, Wesley, Cody Rhodes, and Jay Uso. Mm. In third place is the current TBS Women's Champion, Julia Hart of the House of Black, with four points. Okay, okay. At second place is none other than the current and longest reigning Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, the fallen goddess, the the, the minion overlord, Athena, at 13 points, which means the winner and first ever wrestling's MVP of the year, in the viewers' choice category, we might do one ourselves f- for twenty for the next hmm. year. But the winner is none other than Swerve Strickland with eighteen points. He applied big pressure, and the victory he got. Congratulations to Swerve Strickland on becoming this year's viewers' choice wrestling's MVP of the year. I- Continue to cook in the Continue new year. to cook, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's be honest. If you were, and you know, this this won't count, but as we close out, if you mm-hmm. yourself, and this is let's call it a preview for next year when we do these categories again. But if you, sir, were to pick your MVP wrestling wise for this year, who would that have been? Oh, I would have picked Julia Hart. Hmm. Can I give a quick explanation? The reason why I say I would have picked Julia Hart is because I feel like out of the entire House of Black, she's like being been consistent as far as like in ring. Uh, and I've been seeing her when she was with the Varsity Blondes when they first started in AEW to now. It's like it's night and day. And I would definitely give her. But my very close like neck and neck, if I had to do neck and neck MVPs, it would be. Julia Hart in AEW, Athena in Ring of Honor. Okay. What hands down. Because Athena, like Athena's been cooking nonstop all year. Even when she has squash matches on ROS TV, she gives her opponents something to showcase okay. what they bring to the table. Because most most times out of 10, the uh, talent that she's wrestling is local talent. So what better way, instead of just squashing them and making them like, okay, they whatever, mm-hmm. let them show what they can do against some of the, the best in the world. And she sells every move. So as far as like, that's why I say it's neck and neck. But if I had to pick real, it would be as far as most improved MVP, mm-hmm. Julia Hart, and overall MVP. Athena. Okay, okay, I respect it, brother. I love it. Um, to keep the conversation going as we close out for me, uh, really quickly, I would go with. Uh, I have two as well, and um. My first, I'll do it this way since you did most improve, and then like overall, I would go one male, one female in a sense. Uh, so okay. for me, my male MVP of 2023 has got to be none other than LA Knight. Um, not from an in ring standpoint, because I get it, I know that he may not be the most technically sound person, but as we greatly uh mentioned when we went over like superstar of the year and all the other categories we had, um. Just his rise, his meteoric rise to know to those who knew LA Knight when he was Eli Drake, uh, you know, being in mm-hmm. NWA and, and Impact Wrestling. The stuff he's doing now is what he had been doing from those times, even then, when nobody knew who he was. And to then come into NXT to the few people that didn't know about him, and then slowly just grow on to the people to then get whitewashed by Vince McMahon because he didn't understand it. And then basically right when the opportunity presented itself and Triple H had that moment to to let him shed that, what could have killed his career. He then 
finally got that chance to show the real mainstream audience who LA Knight really is. And to the point where now this man is just so over that he's basically considered a top guy, if not one of the best top guys at the time. You know what I'm saying? And the momentum for him can only carry in to 2024 and beyond. Uh, this brother is really showing, even though I know they talk about his age, uh, that don't stop no show because we see R-Truth doing what he's doing. And he's a lot older than L.A. Knight, believe it or not. So it's like, you know, hey, believe you me. Uh, <clears throat> I would give him that. And then for the ladies, um, this one's a little out there. But because of the first part of her 2023, I know it didn't end well for her in terms of like midway through 2023 on out. But I'm hoping 2024 can be that much bigger for her. But I'm going to give Willow Nightingale her MVP mm. uh, because of the strong start to 2023 that she had. Uh, before something happened that kind of not derailed her, just kind of temporarily put her in a way where it's like she's just kind of there, still can put on a good match, but she's just there. So now I needed to break into level two in 2K24 and be undeniable with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because she's got ultimate right. baby face written all over her. So I hope AEW smart enough to really help her break through that and be a top female in the game. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we thank y'all so much for rocking with us on both parts. That is our a wrap, pretty much. It's a wrap on our end of the year 2K23 awards. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank y'all so much. We are looking forward to keeping it locked with y'all in 2024. Um, again, big round of applause to every wrestler that won in their respective categories every wrestler or moment that was nominated in these categories. We thank all of y'all. Make sure you hit the QR code up there if you want to check out the Unleashed Anthem and among other things that we got coming up. Talk my ish. You already know what it is. Uh, we thank y'all for just always rocking with Life's a Botch, rocking with Gresh Unleashed Pod. We thank y'all. Shout out to all the podcasts as well that got nominated in the viewer's choice of this year. We look forward. We were honored to be a part of that nominee. You know what I'm saying? And uh, at the end of the day, like I said, 2024 is going to soar. It's going to be great. Uh, from a wrestling standpoint, we hope it's just as great, if not better, than 2K23. This is a Kobe year, so it better be. Jordan year wrestling was great. Kobe year better be on some Black Mamba level stuff. So I want to see all you wrestlers go 10 times harder next year. All right? You hear me? Yeah, I know y'all hear me. It was Jordan year, and y'all did y'all thing. Y'all got some championships, y'all, all that. But I need 2K24 to be a Black Mamba-like type year, okay? So keep the same level so we can kill it, all right? That being said, uh, Gresh, you got any final thoughts or tell people where they can find and follow you before we get on up out of here, man? Uh, honestly, 2023 was highs, lows as far as wrestling personally. Uh, also had some life-changing events, but I wouldn't change a thing because I wouldn't be where I am now. Uh you don't you don't live in the past but it's also it's like you take that as a lesson to evolve more and and more so especially in the world of professional wrestling sports entertainment whatever you want to call it everybody has a choice to evolve or get left behind and so far i feel like 2023 was a great year in wrestling uh better than last year way better than 2018 so it's like and definitely better than 2020 as well but it's like this year, even with the injuries, unfortunate injuries, like your Mercedes Monet going down with an injury. Uh, who else got in, got injured? I feel like there's a lot of people who Wesley, got injured. Um, Wesley got injured, and that was a gut wrench because it literally was the the final month of the year uh, where he got he went down. So it's like <clears throat> Adam Copeland went from Edge and early in the year to Adam Copeland mm -hmm. now. Uh, CM Punk went from AEW to WWE. It's like so much. Randy Orton came back after 18 months on the mm -hmm. show. So much has evolved and changed now that we are wrapping up 2023. And honestly, from a creative point of view, I feel like all we can do is just evolve from here. But yo, if you haven't already, make sure you follow yours truly at his Grush on Twitter, Josh Grush from RG everywhere else, or follow the, the podcast itself. 
at Grush Unleashed. Go Grush Unleashed Pod on YouTube. Make sure you guys peep OTS Media as well for the home of the Likes of Watch podcast. Shout out DJ for all for holding it down for all these years. Shout out uh, Ash Benny, uh, Mr. Playboy. Uh, highlight highlight real as always. That's my, that's my that's my partner. Shout out to to the family, the friends who always support and and share our stuff because. It, you don't have to, like you, you really don't, but you choose to because you, you, you got, you love what we do and we love what we do. It's not, it's not because we are obligated to do this. It's because we have fun mm-hmm. doing it. It's all love and game. It's none of that serious stuff. If we do get serious, you know it's serious. But for the most part, it's always fun and games. And it's, and at the end of the day, you have to, rem- you have to remind yourself it is sports entertainment wrestling. Mm-hmm. It's sports. It's not. We're fans. We're at, we're fans. At the end of the day, we're not here to dictate anybody's career, dictate anybody. Someone should get fired here, or there, and that. No, we're here to have fun because we are fans. At the end of the day, I don't care about no ratings. I don't care about no who goes where. As long as you are on my TV and it's like, okay, you're going to AEW. All right, so I'll follow you to TBS and TNT. Oh, you're going to WWE. Okay, I'll follow you to USA, CW, whatever, wherever the TV shows mm-hmm. land. Because I'm a fan of you, not the Amen. company. Yes. So it's like, at the end of the day, going forward, if I have to say one last thing for you guys, if you don't hear me loud and clear, hear this. 2024, leave the tribalism, the unprovoked ass- like verbal assaults online and keep it in the drafts. Matter of fact, don't even let it get to the drafts. Just delete it before you tweet it. Ooh. Hey, make that a shirt, Gresh. <laughs> hey, mark it that. Mark it that. Delete it. The leave the leave before you tweet it. Hey, that's it. That's money. That's money right now. The lead it before the lead it before you tweet it, man. Because it's it's at that point where it's like a lot of the a lot of strife and a lot of headache could be saved if we just read the room. I'm I'm talking from experience. Like I literally had to learn to read the room real quick in in certain situations, especially this past September, July. I was I was out of I was out of character all summer. And it took my mom, God rest her soul, love you always. It took my mom to say, yo, you, you, you're stepping out of pocket. Fix that. And when she told me that, I had no choice but to fix it. And not because she told me, but because I don't ever want to disappoint those who love and respect me. And as a wrestling fan and as a sports fan, for those of you who make wrestling your life, stop being disappointed. Not to me, because I don't know you, but I'm talking about stop being disappointed because there's a reason why a lot of wrestlers don't really talk to y'all online or interact with y'all online because some of y'all some of y'all are weird and y'all need to fix that in 2024 and beyond so honestly remember show love be love and you'll get the love and respect right back tweet it before you delete it before you tweet it otherwise don't cry when you get the, the consequences yes, sir. simple as that and with that being said you guys i'm gonna let highlight sign off but you guys make sure you uh support all of us life's a box crew highlight life it's Gresh, Gresh Unleashed, Josh Gresham RG, GreshUnleashed.com, OTS Media. Because 2024, I feel like we're going to be going 10 times harder because that's all we can do. We can't, we're, ne- we're never stagnant. We're always evolving. And with that being said, but while I give it, hand over the reins, make sure you guys stay safe out here in these streets and remember to always eat sleep flexing. Let's do it, bro. You already know, man. You heard the man. You heard him loud and clear. Remember, always delete it before you tweet it, ladies and gentlemen. That is said. That Add that to the Gresh Digital Media merch, man. I'm telling you. But uh, thank you all so much again for rocking with us all year. Thank you for rocking with us right here for the end of the year awards. Again, if you haven't already, check out part one on the Gresh Unleashed podcast where you can listen in full effect. And of course, the Life Sabotage podcast as well. And we thank you all so much, man. We look forward to 2024. Happy New Year to every single last one of you, you filthy animals. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you all. They're filthy botch of maniacs in my case. Either or, we thank y'all, man. And uh, like I said, we look forward to kicking it. We got a lot of big moves coming in 2024. A lot of uh, dope moments, all that good stuff. But we will be going. This is the final episode for 2023. And we will see y'all in 2024. So one last time for 2K23. I need everybody to put up them two sweets. And give me one good old-fashioned two sweet. Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, we signing off. God bless you. Peace. Peace. Be breezy.